Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to show you how I created my first ring on Blender. For those who don't know, Blender is a software used to create 3D models. It supports the entirety of a 3D pipeline, including modeling, animation, rendering, and more. The best part is that it's free on both Mac and PC, so anyone can download it and follow along. This isn't going to be an in-depth tutorial, but more so a demonstration of how jewelry is created before print. As you can see here, I created a basic circle to create a ring shape. A size 7.5 ring is typically 17.5 millimeters in diameter, which is what I've been typically using to prototype my rings. As you can also see, I am manipulating the depth and creating an extrusion. Next, I will be subdividing the ring to increase the number of polygons and vertices while maintaining the ring's formation. This will allow me to manipulate the top of the ring to give it that curved shape. Now that we have a curved ring, we will add a mirroring modifier on the z-axis to ensure that both sides are even. Prior to using Blender, I was using an app called Shaper 3D on my iPad to create CAD models of rings. I find that Blender's interface definitely gives you a lot more creative freedom to make the designs that you want and you envision. My first impressions of Blender are very positive, but since I've only been using it for a few days, I can't give a full review of all its functions. I still truly believe that Shaper is still a wonderful app since it's user friendly and can produce high quality 3D prints. It also helped me adapt to the design industry's terminology and functions that I wasn't previously familiar with. At the end of this video, you will see that I attempted to print a prototype for this 3D design. Unfortunately, it was not successful at all. This was because I incorporated very small intricate details that weren't recognized by my PLA Prusa printer. On my last video, I received a comment asking why I don't just use a resin printer for jewelry making. Through trial and error and extensive research, I definitely agree that it may be a better option for the type of work I'm doing. I do have my eye on a resin printer called the Form Labs Form 3 printer, but sadly I would need to sell an organ and my firstborn child to afford its high price, marked at $3,500 before tax. As a more affordable alternative, I decided to purchase the Elegoo Mars, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, Elegoo Mars 2, which has great reviews and is a fraction of the price. The printer hasn't arrived yet, but I'm extremely excited to share the results and my thoughts and opinions on it. In the next few weeks, I also plan on going downtown to my city's jewelry district and casting my first design. If anyone has any ideas of what I should design and cast first, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know. I'm open to any ideas. I also forgot to mention here that I am using a blender add-on called JewelerCraft that allows me to add different gems to my 3D model to get a better understanding of how the final product will look like. Here I'm using a Marquise shaped jewel since it's thin and will be used as an accent on the band. Jewel Craft is great because it also provides tools that are good for gemstone setting, product dimensions, and weight in different metals. After creating a union of the mirroring piece of the band, I'm now moving on to creating prongs for the small gems. This will help support the jewel placement. This process requires a curve modifier, which is an efficient method of deforming a mesh along the curved object. This is especially helpful when creating bands with gems. This process also includes resizing the curve to make sure it's a perfect fit for the gem. Looking back, I definitely would have made the prongs a little bit shorter, but that's okay.
Now that we created one set of prongs on the Marquise gem, we can now bring back our band and duplicate the set we created previously to save some time and energy. One aspect that I really like about 3D design is that it's so easy to manipulate your work to ensure accuracy, but to also save time. This part really made me practice rotational adjustments to the prongs using the shortcut keys. I found it personally difficult to start thinking in 3D as my mentor calls it, because every action you do corresponds to the X, Y, or Z axis. At first, those letters really freaked me out because of the PTSD from calculus. However, once you get a general understanding of the axis and where it's located, it's very simple moving and rotating the objects within the software. You can see them in the background on the grid, the red line, green line, and the blue line. Once it's aligned perfectly, we will duplicate the two sets of prongs by selecting both of them and rotating the pair 180 degrees to match the other side. To lock the prongs in place, we will go under the Bool Tool tab and union all the additions to the band. If union doesn't work, you can also use Join as an alternative, which is Control J. Now I'm going to create a frame for the center stone. This will ensure the stone stays in place and doesn't move around. In this clip, I'm adding a cylinder to mock the bottom of the gem and make a subtraction. This can be done under the edit tool and selecting difference. This will create a hole in the frame. This part is my absolute favorite because the design is slowly coming together and starting to look like a ring. I am once again using the Jewel Craft add-on to make additional prongs for the center stone. This function allows me to choose the amount of prongs desired along with its positioning and thickness. In my opinion, one of the best functions of Blender is the ability to add color and texture to the 3D model to give it a realistic appearance. Here I added the material labeled fake glass to give it the appearance of being an engagement ring. I then duplicated the ring a few times to give a few examples of how I would design it. Here is the final product of my first ever ring on Blender. I am excited to share what's coming up in the next few weeks, and although you'll see my print is a terrible representation of the design I created, I expect the results to be substantially better in the coming weeks when I incorporate the new printer. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to join me on my journey in building my jewelry design business. See you guys next week.